In today's video, I'm going to show you how to use the five most important avatar tools you can use in Unity as an avatar creator. You're going to find all the links to these tools in the video description. So first, I'm going to show you the pumpkin avatar tools. So after importing the package, you go to tools, pumpkin avatar tools. And for the purpose of this tutorial, I'm going to get my FBX and we're going to copy stuff from the previous ready to do ready to work avatar to my mesh. So I'm just going to put it here. Let me just position it real quick. So it's next to my original avatar. And you need to drag the avatar you want the changes to be applied to, uh, to click and drag and put it here. Then you scroll up here and copy from is going to be the original you want to copy from. But first it can do quite a few cool things. For example, if you click fill Visemis, it has input the AVRC avatar descriptor and set up the Visemis for the mug movement, which will work in most cases. Also, if your avatar, for example, uh, for whatever reason, has blend shapes set up to something, you can zero blend shapes with one click here and everything gets set up to zero. You can also edit the viewpoint by clicking here, which is uh, pretty handy. Then after you're done with that, you go here and you can disable enable face bones if you want to for whatever reason, but we don't have any yet. So we're gonna scroll down to apply face bones and other things. So here you basically take what you want to copy from the original to the new one. You can, for example, only copy face bones or only copy the avatar descriptor or only copy like materials on the skin renders and all that. For the purpose of this tutorial, I'm going to be changing pretty much everything. So we go through the list and you click what you want to copy. And I'm going to leave everything as it is. And then you click copy selected. And there we go. Our, our avatar is pretty much the same as uh, the original. With all the materials, face bones, the VRC avatar descriptor and other settings. You can also remove components if you want to with these buttons such as these fist bones. I just can just remove them. Now here you have some text about your avatar performance, which is basically the same thing that's uh, in the SDK, but you have it here. And I never used this, so I have no clue what this does, but anyway. The next tool is the avatars 3.0 manager. So you're gonna import the package, then you want to open it here and you click and drag again the avatar you want to work on. And what is this tool for? So basically in here, we can manage parameters on our layers, but we can also add and add layers to merge with the original ones. For example, if you are applying Gogo Loco or some kind of a prefab you bought somewhere and it doesn't have VRC Fury or anything like automatic, you can merge it using this tool. So, for the purpose of the tutorial, I'm going to change the effects layer and I'm going to add animator to merge. And I have an FX layer that I made for this tutorial here. So I click and drag and it's going to show you the list of parameters. So you merge on current or merge on new. If you want to merge on new, it's going to create a backup basically. So, I'm go but I'm going to merge on current. There we go. And the same way as you can merge these layers, you can also merge and edit parameters. So I'm going to drag these created parameters here and copy. And there we go, it's all added. You can also change right defaults on and off on all the layers if you want to, but this is pretty advanced, so you probably know what you're doing and you don't need this video tutorial. Third tool is the Gesture Manager emulator. And this tool allows you to emulate VRChat's environment in Unity, which means you don't have to upload or build and test your avatars to test um, your functions. Even though that is the case, I always advise before uploading or making a package of an avatar to test it in game at least once. Because, you know, sometimes weird stuff can happen in like different worlds, lighting emissions and all that. 
but for general bug fixing like toggles and radials and whatnot this is a very good tool so how do we use this you go to tools after importing the package and you click gesture manager emulator and it's going to put this object into the scene and you need to enter play mode to use it so we can do that with the button up here or you can also enter play mode on the object itself now it's going to work a little bit we go to scene so we see what's happening and you're in the gesture manager and you need to click and drag your avatar into the slot here so it's emulating if you have only one avatar in the scene it's going to automatically select the correct one so what are the things that we can test here for example we can test our hand gestures by clicking through another thing is you can just use the menu like you would in game and check see all your radios and toggles if they work another thing uh, this is a bit more advanced but if you want to you can change all the parameters here to whatever values to bug fix for example um, there should be somewhere upright there we go if you change upright to 0 0.4 she's gonna be I think crouching and if, you, if it's 0 0.1 it's prone but I think crouching is let's see maybe 0 0.6 oh yeah there we go 0 0.6 is for crouching which I have this animation set up for in Google Loco and 0 0.2 is for prone which I have this sit sitting position right here and if you put it back to one she's gonna be standing again so that's one thing you can test as well in uh, this tool. You can also see all the details about your tracking and in animator states you can see what is happening, which state is currently active in all the layers you have on the avatar, which is a bit, uh, which is a bit advanced. You can also test OSC apps here. So if your avatar uses OSC, you can literally start on VR chat ports and it's gonna receive your signals and you can test then you have a bunch of these tools that are never used uh, they seem very specific but yeah I'm gonna show you the next tool copy avatar bounding is a tool that we use when for when for example sometimes it happens that on some avatars you see parts of their body disappear when you look at them at certain angles I'm pretty sure you've seen that before it happens all the time and why is that it's because the bounding box is too small and a bounding box is this uh, white rectangle thing and we want to resize it so it includes the whole avatar and also so it includes the avatar if for example you're putting your legs in front of you so we click on one of the meshes that we have for example the pants and we are going to edit bounds and now you find these little squares and you drag drag it out and you have to look at it from a specific angle to see them so i think that's enough from the other side i'm gonna do the same also gonna give myself a bit more space on my hands that's good enough same on this side and on uh on my head it should be a bit more a bit more even yeah that should be fine so after we're done editing the bounding box which should very nicely include the whole avatar i'm gonna stop editing and now we're going to tools just unity tools copy bounding and you drag the mesh you just edited the bounding box in into the source and as a root you click and drag your avatar and you copy boundings from source to all objects in root one click there we go then you check all your meshes and see if the bounding box is the same and includes the whole avatar it's a very simple tool but it saves a lot of time because if you were to edit these by hand all the time you would go crazy so definitely use this and the last tool that's pretty cool and I want to show it to you today is the editor screenshot 
So you import the package and then you go to pumpkin and edit a screenshot. And what this is for, it's going to take pictures of uh, what you're looking at basically in the scene. You can change the here to the game camera, but we're going to use the scene view camera. And you change the resolution, also the multiplier you can change, but it's going to be really big if you do that. You can check for transparent background, which is good when you're making, for example, um, when you want to work with the image later in Photoshop or anything. And you can change the path when it's going to be saved. And if you're done posing your camera, you just click take screenshot. And it's gonna take a screenshot of your scene like this. So you can also do that for previews of your avatar or anything you really want. If you like this video, comment, subscribe, give it a like, and tell me what tutorials you would like to see, and I'll see you later.